Hey guys, what's going on here? It is I, the owner of this channel, and I'm trying something new. I'm not trying to steal an idea, but I'm trying to take the same concept of somebody else's YouTube idea. <coughs> and I'm gonna do it my own way. This is gonna be a game theory video. I'm not gonna do them often, and I'm not planning on doing them. I'm just doing this one because this is an idea I have, and I want to express my opinions about it. It's not going to be perfect, it's I'm doing it all in one take, and I'm just going to put clips on it. So anyway, we should probably get started. <clears throat> As you can probably tell from the title, it is just another fan theory that I came across, actually. I came across it a while back, and I liked it, and it made sense, and I actually took my own opinions on it and connected it to other ideas that I have about it. And this is going to prove that GTA has one major protagonist, and that his name is Michael DeSantana. I don't think I said his name right, but I don't care. The point is, is that he is Claude from GTA 3 and Claude Speed from GTA 2. Now you're all thinking, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't match up. Well, I'm going to show you that it does. It also matches up with my own theory that all GTA and all Rockstar games are within the same universe, but that's for another video I intend to make later on. You can disagree with that, but I'm going to share my ideas, and you can debate them in the comments, but I don't care. So, basically where I'm going to start is GTA 3. In GTA 3, it opens up where you are betrayed by your girlfriend Catalina, who is a major character, or a somewhat major character, in GTA San Andreas, when she is Carl Johnson's girlfriend. You even see Claude in GTA San Andreas. He doesn't talk like normal, but he's there. And really, what happens is that she betrays Claude, and, you know, he kills her later on. But I want to point out that Claude probably is the bad guy. Because, let me, let me tell you why. But before I do that, let me address the elephant in the room that you guys brought in. It, it has to do with Michael from GTA 5. Well, he has kids. We all know this. He has two kids. Both are in their either late teens or early 20s. Now, GTA 5 takes place in GTA, you know, Los Santos. But it also takes place in, I think, 2012, 2013, around that. So you're right. It doesn't match up with the events of GTA 3, which takes place in 2000, 2001. Which would mean that Claude would have to have already had kids by then. Well, I think he did. Here's the thing, let's talk about Catalina for a second. We all know that she is very, very sensitive to cheating. For God's sake, she put a gun to Carl Johnson's head just for the idea that popped in her head that he might cheat. Just for that. Not even for anything he did. Now, of course, if you had dated Denise in the in-game dating game that happens, then you are guilty. But even if you didn't do it and you broke up with her already, she'll still accuse you of it. It's a storyline mission. It talks about her character. And what does she do in GTA 3? Well, as soon as you rob the bank, she shoots you point blank and leaves you for dead. It would make sense, and it would make sense because 12 years later, in 2001, it would, it would basically, no, not 12 years later, but about 9 years later, I'm getting confused here, <laughs> in 2001, she probably calmed down a little bit, with, but was still crazy. What did she do? Well, basically, what happened is that Claude probably had people in Los Santos that he was close with. He probably had a side girlfriend, and he cheated on Catalina with, um, <clears throat> with her. And we don't really, I don't really know her name off the bat, but I can tell you that she did actually cheat on her. That she, that he cheated on Catalina with this woman, and he had a child with her, and he wanted to, he may have decided to let her keep it and stay with her, and possibly had, and possibly had the third one, I mean the second one, 
<laughs> he does not have three kids. At least we don't think so. But that probably happened. It probably caused him to escape his old life. Or even, or even, even better, he probably left anyway on his random leavings in order to meet up with Catalina again. They weren't together 24/7 for 10 years. I don't think so. So what happened is when she got wind of it, oh my god, she probably freaked out but didn't say anything to him. She waited until the perfect chance to get him in deep shit. She she waited until, and unfortunately for him, she won until, you know, the Com Colombian cartel destroyed the bridge, the Callahan Bridge that is, and he was able to get out and get to her, you know, a few storyline missions later. So I'm saying that Michael, who is, that is not even his real name, for God's sakes. That is the name that he was given by, you know, the Witness Protection Program. So I'm saying that his real name was Claude, and what happened is that after the events of GTA 3, when it, after he successfully kills Catalina, he probably goes back to Los Santos to settle his life, life down with his wife. Now, not to say he was a good fan, but that probably happened. Therefore, that makes it would make sense that Claude and him were the same person. Also, look at this photo of Michael's chest. He has a scar right under his, you know, right peck. It would make sense because in GTA 3, Claude gets shot presumably in the chest, not to kill him, but injured. Maybe that's the same scar from that, or that's the scar from the shootout in the prologue in GTA 5. We don't really know. However, it's possible that it's the same big scar that happened when Catalina decided to get her revenge. But I still also maintain that Catalina was not the bad guy. I, bad guy. I think that Michael or Claude was the bad guy by cheating on her and hurting her feelings. And then he killed her for getting revenge. Nobody's a good guy, but just to say that Catalina is not the total bad guy here. Also, it should be worth pointing out, and this is a very key piece of information, that the protagonist, Michael De Santana from GTA 5, is also a bank robber. Guess who was robbing a bank in the prologue of GTA 3? What can I say? So, I know what you're thinking, it does not make sense still, it's just a stretch. It's a stretch, but it's a stretch that I'm willing to do. Also, keep in mind that the social, their um, socialness, you know, their social construct of them is very similar, except for the fact that Claude is a lot quieter, except for the fact that maybe he was younger. He was younger, he's professional, just like Michael. Michael has a short temper, but he's a lot more professional than Trevor Phillips or Franklin. He's smart, he's professional, he knows things. He's also kind of a sociopath too. Not a psychopath like Trevor, but a sociopath. He's quiet and a little more reserved. Of all the GTA 5 protagonists, he's a lot quieter. And I truly believe that he is, you know, I'm not, but let me just dial back a bit. He's not quiet. He's just not as boisterous as Trevor Phillips and not as vocal as Franklin. I don't think so. So I think that maybe as he got older, he learned to speak more, but his professionality matches up with Claude's professionality. They do what they're supposed to do and they don't really fight it that much. They have a task, they do it, they get it done, just like the GTA 2 protagonist. Oh wait, no, we're not there yet. But it, it matches up with their personality traits. They're both, you know, not, they're both sociopaths who know how to get the job done. And they're smart and they're capable. And they both have scars on their chest from when they got shot at some point. Probably after or before the incident with GTA 3, he probably met up with Trevor Phillips in North Yankton. Maybe after. I can't really pinpoint which, but I think that that happened then too. He was all over the place. He was a street racer at start, but then with Catalina, he was doing crimes all over the place. He probably met up with these people. And later on, he went to the witness protection. Just saying. But I'm not done yet. I am not even done yet. Because I'm now going to connect it 
to another thing. You remember, you guys remember GTA 2? A very not so notable game. Not very well fun. Nobody seems to care about the 2D era games. However, I am convinced. However, if you look at the game, GTA 2 takes place in the future in anywhere city. And as if you look at the protagonist's in-game art or you know the game art that is created for him by the company, it shows him looking a lot older. He looks like Nico Bellic, but he looks older. He looks a little bit older than you would expect. And his name is Claude, so it's possible he got out of witness protection and changed his name back to Claude. And maybe his original last name was Speed. And now he's in his 60s, continuing his life of crime. His kids are out of the house. His wife might be injured or dead somewhere. We don't really know. But I think that he is the same guy. Now, we really don't know much about the character except that he's a sociopath. He does not talk a whole lot, but he is a sociopath. He also gets the job done. He's professional. He has respect. I truly believe that at some point in Michael DeSanta's life, he decides that he does not want to live with his wife anymore. And what does he do? He moves to the new Anywhere City. Where is that? We don't know. It's anywhere. However, it's possible that in Anywhere City, he's aged quite a bit. Now, he does not look horribly old, but it's possible that 20 years later when he's in his 40 when he's in his 60s or 70s, he still is nimble. He's still strong enough to continue going. And he's just committing the crimes that he has. And he's older, so he's probably commanded a lot more respect. As you can see in the game, where he is called a lot of different names of respect. Because people respect him. He was even able to get seven gangs to fight each other in GTA 2. So I'm saying that GT San Andreas, he was a prominent street racer in Los Santos. And then, in before GTA 3, he had kids with a woman. And... In GTA 3, he had his confrontation with Catalina, who found out he was cheating, and then he killed her later on. And before GTA 5, he moved back to Los Santos and raised his kids, or his kid, or even one of his kids. It's, who's to say that one of his kids is not his, but he adopted him anyway. But he raised it and did the best that he could. He didn't do a good job, but he did the best that he could. And then after GTA 5, unless he is killed, of course, understand that if you went with the ending where he dies, then the whole point is mute. But most people don't, so it's possible that he, after GTA 5, he eventually goes to this new city and continues his life of crime and is still widely respected. What happens next, we don't know. But I'm telling you, in GTA 2, GTA 2 is the original. GTA 3 is a prequel, and GTA 5 is a sequel to the prequel. It would make sense to me. So the timeline would be GTA San Andreas, he's a street racer. GTA 3, he is just a small mob guy just committing crimes and trying to get revenge on his former love. GTA 5, he's a father who's trying to just settle down but gets continuing to just continue doing his crime he's too old for this and in gta 2 he's gone back to his life of crime and is enjoying it now also we should also discount the movie gta 2 sorry guys no we should discount the movie gta 2 because it doesn't have any prominence just like you don't count the super mario brother so yes that is my theory and you can choose to believe it or not but there is some evidence that proves it. It's all circumstantial. There's no proven evidence. But it would make sense. And if you want to say that Tommy Versetti is the same it is the same guy as Michael, I actually would disagree. Keep in mind that Tommy Versetti is in his 30s to 40s in 1986, which is when Vice City happened. So that would mean that several years later in GTA 5, he would have to be pretty much in his late 50s, early 60s, which wouldn't be very, very well thought out, which would mean that in GTA 2, if we continue it going, he would have to be 80. Well, maybe if you discount it, but I don't think that Tommy Versetti 
and Michael De DeSant De Santana are the same person. It doesn't make sense. I maintain that in GTA 2, it's a future. It's just the future. And GTA 5 and GTA 3 are prequels to it. I hope you guys liked the video. I know that it's a stretch. I know that I, anyone who watches it is going to disagree with me and think I'm an idiot. But in reality, it's just the game. It really doesn't matter. But just like Matt Pat does on his game theory, I'm entitled to make educated guesses on what I think. I also think that all the Rockstar games are in the same universe, but that's for another game. You can argue with me, and I will let you comment, but make sure that if you comment, you keep it civil, because I'm presenting a fact that I truly believe. But then again, this is the internet, everybody is different. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. I know it's a stretch, I know it might cause some people to be like, you're a dummy, and you might be right, but this is a theory that I have, and I wanted to share it to the world. Anyway guys, hit that like button if you agree with me, or better yet, why don't you tell me your theory? If you have a theory about it, tell me, but just, just do it. Honestly, I'm not going to make a lot of these theory videos, I just wanted to share this theory that I came across, and made some additional tweaks to because it made more sense. Anyway, peace.